So, hey guys, um, I have not posted a video in forever, but um, it's called Life. I've been doing it a lot and I'm really working on trying to keep up with things. But the reason I'm doing this is because I have recently rejoined a rugby team and I am very much enjoying it, but it's taking up literally all of my time, my practice, two nights a week, but it's fantastic. I can't even say I'm upset about it. With that in mind, uh, we have a big game coming up on Saturday and hi Ninja. One of the girls recently posted, um, how do you get yourself pumped up for a sports event? Ninja. It's very difficult. She had, she had posted, hey, how do you get yourself pumped up? And I was like, oh, that's a really good thing. And people were like, oh, I do stretching. I do make sure I get to sleep the night before. Make sure that I go to bed on time starting Thursday for a game on Saturday. Like all of this stuff. So I've been laughing my butt off for like three days thinking about this because I went to try to go tell someone what I do to get ready. And quite honestly, it's not that cool. It mostly involves me screwing up and forgetting things. So I figured I would try to go through a rundown of what I actually do in order to get ready for a rugby game. So this is gonna be a little bit eclectic. Um, I'm gonna have to snip it a lot. And that's okay because I've been watching literally nonstop Jenna Marbles. And if you've ever watched Jenna Marbles, you know what I'm talking about. But um, so I'm gonna be doing that for this with my terrible webcam with my cat and my dogs outside barking. That's my other problem. I have essentially two puppies that require full-time attention and um, one of them really enjoys books. Uh, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows is no more if you'd like to send me a copy of that. Um, the end of my book is missing. So with no further ado, here is how I prepare for rugby. Starting around Wednesday for a game on Saturday, I begin to panic. I begin to think, huh, hopefully I don't get sick. Wonder what would happen if my legs started cramping. What if I get into an accident between now and then? And then I get really, really, really freaked out. Like, oh, I do that, probably a little batty. I mean, I go to practice, I do my workouts, I do my stretches. Like, I do all of the things I'm supposed to do. I drink water, I get sleep, I do all that. I really try, but I have a puppy who gets the zoomies at like four in the fucking morning. That was last night. So good for me, Thursday night, last night, Got that going for me. It's like Wednesday and Thursday, I start to panic. Um, starting at around 2 p.m. on Friday, this is like, you know, you're at work, you're really, like your lull is starting to go down anyway. Like, oh man, I'm really starting to try to not work. I'm trying to find literally anything to do. Oh my God, is this Candy Crush? Like, you know, that kind of thing. I start to get really distracted at work and it typically starts me looking up, you know, rugby videos. In this particular case, for this particular weekend, the girls were like, oh, this is what my pump up song is. So anyone who follows me on Twitter, I apologize. Now there's probably about 30 videos that have been added to my playlist called, I named it something that is like probably not the most intelligent thing, rugby team selected sports pump up songs. And that is how I killed probably about an hour an hour of my day today so I did that and so far I realized that this is probably all fairly normal stuff and I'm okay with that but you know I have people I, I love what I love my team I really do and they're writing stuff like you know this is what I'm wearing to the practice to get people riled up this is what I listen to don't eat anything too fatty or spicy here's your pump up song listen to these lyrics you know it's it's all fantastic and I really appreciate it but like, I feel like because I never played sports in high school, um, and most of you probably know that I was homeschooled my entire life, and then I went to college and nobody was related to me and I didn't play any sports there until the very end of my senior year. Well, I'm old. Anyway, so I really didn't have, like all of my sports preparation has been me and my adulthood trying to figure it out, which I don't know if that's better or worse than me and my childhood trying to figure out. You know what I mean? With that in mind, here is what happened 12 hours before a game. First of all, Friday night before a game, I go home, I tell myself I'm going to pack most of my shit. Do I actually do this? Not usually. I end up going, I know where most of that is. My shorts are over there. My socks are over there. Pretty sure my mouth guard is still in my gym bag. Don't know if it's in its little packet um, and not swassy, but uh, it's there somewhere. So I kind of just make sure that I have that in my head where I know where it is, question mark. But it's in my car somewhere, which is basically the black hole of everything that I own. And that's fine. I really need to clean it. Anywho, so I, I, I kind of take a mental list. I'm like, are they clean? Sometimes they're not. Not really the most important factor here. So I take, I make sure that I know mentally where everything is. If I know mentally where everything is, I tell myself, and this is how I justify it, because I'm a very rational human being. I tell myself, cool, 
good job self, you can go eat dinner or something. What I end up doing is I sit there and I, I don't drink the night before games because that's stupid. One time I drank before my very first 10K, I was miserable. I was pretty sure I was dying while running and I didn't know that, that you could uh, possibly do that, but it was my very first road race and uh, I was uh, hungover as fuck. So I tend to never do that anymore. I don't drink, I drink either seltzer or water and if I'm really feeling fancy, I drink crystal light. Classy AF right here. But I sit here and I, I literally play video games. I sit here and play video games. I mean, I'll roll stuff out. I've got my, my barbells over here. I'll kind of stretch out. I've got a IT roller because those quads though, I swear to God, I make an effort to go to bed by 10 p.m. But my brain won't shut the fuck up. I go to bed and I'm like, okay, cool. All right, what am I gonna do tomorrow? All right, I'm gonna make sure I get that, set my alarm. So then I obsessively check my alarm. Like it's now 11 p.m. and I've checked my alarm seven times to make sure it's set for the correct time of morning. I double check the address. Now keep in mind, I could have done all of this Thursday or Friday when I was looking up rugby pump up songs, but no, my brain decides that the best time to do this is 10.30 p.m while in bed wearing no pants. In the dark, I get myself all riled up. I'm looking at my phone obsessively, making sure I have the right address, making sure I know where I'm going, making sure I have not one, not two, but three alarms set to make sure I get the fuck up in the morning. Now, keep in mind, the dogs, I love them. They're glorious puppies, but they're they're young. I mean, Diode is now a little over a year. Uh, Amp is about nine months old. They know when bedtime is, and bedtime is when mummy lays in bed, binge watches Bob's Burgers or Futurama on her tablet or phone, and that's bedtime. There's a tiny little screen. So I go through this and the, and the puppies are like, why is mommy shifting around so much? Clearly this is the time to be riled up. So I'll accidentally give the puppies the zoomies at 11 p.m. right after I've gone to bed for maybe an hour, which is, by gone to bed, I mean I have taken off my pants, laid down, post teeth brushing, of course. I'm not a heathen. Like, I actually do cleanse my mouth prior to bedtime and all the normal girl things to go to bed. But I do that after an hour, an hour and a half, where I finally decide that I'm going to tell myself, no, you need to stop obsessing, self. So make sure that you put everything away and you lay down. Put on your TV. So I start putting on my TV. Of course, my brain won't shut up, but then I need to focus on, you know, whatever it is the, that, whatever the fuck I've decided to binge watch on Hulu or Netflix at the time. And typically I will fall asleep. Here's where it gets really tricky. When and if I do fall asleep within a reasonable time, I will wake up no less than four times the night before a rugby game. No less. Because I will have been either dreaming about something, I have kicked people in my sleep. Um, when I've been sleeping uh, next to significant others, I have actually booted them in the leg the nights before rugby games to the point where they've woken up and had bruises and I'm very apologetic but like I end up dreaming about rugby I end up like just sleep anxious whatever I, I don't even know how I do it but I end up just like being a hot sleeping mess somehow I make it through my night barely one of my alarms go off of course it's at some god-awful time in the morning because you're playing in a date three hours away and you're like, this is fantastic. I love driving super far to be somewhere totally awake and hitting people early in the morning. So I ignore my first alarm to a point, but I also, as mentioned, have puppies who realize that when the alarm goes off, mom's gonna get up at some point soon. So they're gonna get the zoomies immediately. They're gonna be like, oh, bitch is up. We should also be up and expressive and to make sure that mom gets us breakfast or goes outside because we'd really like to chase the squirrels. Usually I can ignore whatever time my alarm goes off for maybe I can squeak 10 more minutes out of the dogs before they're like, fuck it, hey, mom, get your ass out of bed because we're puppies and we've got shit to do. I deal with that. I have to get up a little extra early, I find, with the puppies and make sure that I give myself time to let them out and give them time to make sure I can get them back in because sometimes when they're outside and they're really happy to be outside, they don't, they don't want to come back in. And you can't fucking chase them because they're puppies and they're much faster than you are. So I let them out. I come back in. I acquire all of my things that I told myself I knew where they were the night before. Now, typically this involves me going out to my car three or four times because as I said, my car kind of contains everything. I could probably live out of my car indefinitely. I've got a blanket in there. I mean, it's the dog's blanket, but I've got a blanket in there. I've got water, I've got snacks, I've got two pairs of cleats, I've got a gym bag, I have an overnight bag, I have, oh, I've literally got all of the things in there. Essentially, I end up bringing a backpack into the middle of my kitchen and I go out to my car repeatedly to acquire all of the things I need. Go down to the dryer in the basement, probably two or three, two or three times to fetch clean socks, clean t-shirt, 
sports bra, you know, good underpants, because I don't know if any of you women are listening and, and realize that there are correct and incorrect underpants to wear when you're playing sports, because, uh, yeah, I, I don't really want to go into it, but you need good underpants. So I acquire all these things. I find spandex. I try on two or three pairs of rugby shorts that I know don't fit me well, and I don't want to run around in. It's like trying to dress, get dressed up on a Saturday night and realizing that every outfit you've put on so far, you don't want to wear because you feel funny in it. Um, but I do that two or three times with just shorts. Like, never mind an entire outfit. It's literally a pair of shorts with stretchy bands that I OCD over. So once I get past all this, I go out to my car. I put my bag in my car. I get the dogs, you know, obviously I've gotten, I've gotten the dogs in at this point. Let's just kind of assume this. And I have started my car thought to myself and I went, did I check that my mouth guard was actually in my bag? 99% of the time it is, but that 1% of the time is uh, not something you want to fuck with. So you make sure that that shit's in your bag. You like, you need your mouth, right? Like ain't nobody wants to lose teeth over this. Um, so I will stop my car. I will check my backpack. I still have yet to learn to put my backpack in the front seat with me to make sure that I could probably just, you know, lean over and check my GM bag, but I haven't, I haven't learned that yet. Maybe I will tomorrow, but we'll see. So I'm still learning that. I will have checked my bag for my mouth guard probably three times before I ever leave my driveway. I will have run into my house two or three times for things that I thought I needed, but had already brought out to my car. Sometimes for something I didn't bring out, but it's usually not a big deal. Like, oh no, I didn't bring a third pair of socks, whatever. At this point, I will have brought my energy drink, checked for my mouth guard, all that fun stuff, and I finally leave my house. I stop at probably Dunkin's, unless I've already got it, but what I end up doing, and I know people are like, here are my power foods that I eat the night before. I have pasta, I carbo load. What I tend to do, and any of my rugby friends who may or may not watch this will, will probably have seen me do it at some point, but I will essentially get a plain, like by plain I mean with nothing on it, cinnamon raisin bagel from probably Dunkin' Donuts or I have it already, and I will eat it as is, like a T-Rex in my car. Like, I go up to the Dunkin' Donuts window and I'm like, put a cinnamon raisin bagel in the bag, and they're like, do you want us to toast that? I'm like, nope, do you want, do you want cream cheese? Nope, just put it in the damn bag, and I will put it in my mouth. Yeah, I have some shame over that, but I'm not really, um, I'm too old to care. So if this is the method that I have worked out. At that point, I'm finally on the road to rugby and I'm probably gonna need to pee two or three times because I've overhydrated the night before and that's kind of where that ends. But I do get to the field on time. Uh, ultimately, I think I've only ever been late for a game like once. I do feel like internally, I'm a little hot mess, but outside I'm like, well, look at all the things I have together. Look how impressive I am, but I'm just faking it in reality. Oh, and during this, I do listen to all of my music and some of it is shameful. I will jam out and sing like the same line over and over again. And um, usually I'm not wearing real pants when I show up, but yeah. So that is my pre rugby game sports. Like this is how I prep mentally and physically. And I'm sure I can improve on it, but at this point, I might be stuck with it. So today I actually have to go down to my brother's who's going to watch both my dogs for me while I have a game that's three hours away from my house. Um, so I actually have to not do that and I have to make sure I have all of the things ready before I leave my house in the next hour. So I'm gonna go do that. Uh, thanks for listening and paying attention if you sat through this. I'm gonna do a really, really quick edit and see how it came out. This has been stuck in my brain for like three days, so I don't care. I mean, I do care, but I don't really care how it came out. I care only enough that I got it out of my brain and I did the thing, even if the thing sucks. So thanks for listening. Thanks for paying attention. And uh, hopefully your methods are more efficient than mine are for your preparation. All right, take it easy. Bye.